Hello everybody, my name is Nick Peralta, writer for MMAOutsiders.com as well as admin for the MMA Discussion Facebook page and welcome to the second video of what we are now dubbing Puncher's Chance. I know the first video came out weeks ago. Uh, I was dealing with being sick as well as a few other personal things but uh, I believe now we're going to start getting on track. Yes, I'm back! We'll be talking about all the news and fights made for the third week of September, September 11th till September 16th. So let's kick this shit out. Luke Rockhold vs. Jacare Souza 2 set for UFC Fight Night in Melbourne on November 26th. I love it! This is a great fight made. And for anybody that doesn't know, uh, this fight happened, the first fight between these two men happened back in 2011 when they fought for the Strike Force middleweight title. And that was easily one of the best title fights uh, of the promotion's history. Rockhold would uh, go on to win the title and uh, win the fight via unanimous decision. However, it was controversial. A lot of fans disputed the decision. It was certainly a close fight, but uh, I, I damn well enjoyed it, and I can't imagine the second one doesn't also deliver. I mean, just think about it. What a time to be alive! I mean, you got both of these guys facing off at when they're both at the top of their game, hands down. What I love about this, too, is that it opens up the possibility that we see Chris Weidman versus Yoel Romero. Um, a fight we've already been hearing rumors of lately. Also, think about this. If Dan Henderson, if Dan Henderson is able to pull off the phenomenal upset against Michael Bisping later on in this, uh, later on in October at UFC 204, and he does retire with the championship, which would be epic, by the way, then that leaves the, the possibility of the winner of both of those two crazy matchups, Weidman Romero and Jacare Rockhold, to fight for the then vacant belt. All the while, you're just getting three amazing matchups. Think about that is awesome. Any way those two fights go, you're gonna get an amazing third matchup. You can get either Luke Rockhold, Weidman 2, you can get Jacare Romero 2, or you could get Rockhold uh, Romero, or you can get Weidman Jacare. I mean, those are all the possibilities. So many. I'm losing my mind just thinking about it. I can't wait. Great matchup made. I'm excited. Jordan Mean to return from MMA after retiring last year at age 25. For those of you that don't remember, Canadian welterweight Jordan Mean retired last year at a very young age of 25 years old with a professional record of 29 and 10. For a guy that's been fighting since he was 16 years old, regardless of his age now, to have 39 fights in, in that time span is actually pretty crazy and somewhat impressive. Mean himself, as well as family and uh, coaches of the, the people close to him, have been citing uh, possible neurological issues, head trauma, uh, injuries like that, as to the reason why he decided to retire in the first place. Uh, apparently now the tune is, all he needed was a little bit of time from the sport. Mean and his coaches are now stating that he is training more intelligently than he ever has before, as well as now he has a newfound drive to compete. Uh, I gotta say, I love it. Who doesn't want to see a young stud get back in there? He's still obviously very young. He has been in a lot of fights, yes, but uh, as long as he himself gets green lit to fight and compete, I'm not arguing it. Jordan Mean is a very exciting fighter to watch. Uh, you know, if you haven't already seen any of his fights, go check him out on YouTube, on Fight Pass, whatever you gotta do. I'm telling you, he's a fun guy to watch. Maybe not right as he comes back, but a matchup between him and like an Alan Joe Ban. Love that fight. That would be a fantastic fight. Two guys who are prolific strikers. Jordan Mean, very exciting striker himself. If those two fought, I, I, that'd be a barn burner. I, that's the kind of fight I want to see. Again, now when he comes back, it certainly makes sense to see a fight like that down the road, though. Either way, welcome back, Jordan Mean. Donald Cowboy Cerrone to face Gelvin Gastelum at UFC 205. I just want to say, I feel you guys. I feel it. You know, we were all heartbroken <laughs> to not get Cerrone Lawler. I'm with you. Like it hurts. Like, like it physically hurts. I mean, yeah. MMA fans can't have nice, nice things. There's never been a truer statement. <laughs> However. This is a solid fight, and a very interesting one at that. Kelvin is coming off a huge win at UFC 200, defeated Johnny Hendricks, the former welterweight champion, and Donald Cerrone is coming off this Anderson Silva level light performance against Rick Story, where he landed this insane combination. It's one of the best finishes of the year. If you haven't seen it, which I doubt you have not, uh, go check that out. That is one of the craziest highlights of the year, hands down. Um, I mean, he looked phenomenal as he's ever looked before. So, 
this is a great fight. I mean, D Donald has the striking and reach advantage. I would say Kelvin probably has the strength and, and wrestling advantage. Um, so it, it's really hard to tell how this one's going to play out. This is a very tough, um, and I really expect it to be a very much competitive fight. You know, Cerrone has been prone to guys or with Kelvin's fighting style before. I mean, we've but we've seen a new rise from him in this division, and a lot of people attribute that to the lack of weight cut that, that he has to do now. He doesn't have to cut as much weight, and that that very much well played into his newfound success at welterweight. And I think it's uh, it's the healthier option for him, and he's still competing at a very high level with some of the best guys. I mean, Rick Story is one of the guys at welterweight that if you beat him, you you get to move on to legitimacy in this division, hands down for sure. No matter what, I do expect this fight to easily give us out some fireworks. I mean, it's got Donald Cerrone. I mean, what do you expect, you know? Chael Sonnen leaves the UFC, signs with Bellator, and calls out Tito Ortiz. Oh, the bad guy is back. Wow. I mean, bold move. I certainly didn't see it coming. I'm, wow, you know? I mean, if there's anywhere he can go and compete competitively at his age, it is Bellator. Bellator admittedly has like one of the weakest middleweight divisions. Um, and if he, if, if he wanted to, if he decided to drop down to that weight class, I could see him being very successful there. It makes sense because he has much more value as a Bellator fighter. You know, um, that's just the case. He isn't as popular in the UFC as he used to be. And, 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 and you know, trying to rise that popularity with that brand um, would certainly be more difficult. He, he's easily more um, valuable to Bellator. There's more of a mystique with him, too, because, you know, that Bellator is about making these, these hectic, crazy pride level type matchmaking deals. And uh, so, <laughs> so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens now. It would appear that he wants to fight at light heavyweight now. And, I mean, there are guys like King Mo, Rampage, Tito Ortiz, who he called out uh, shortly after making his uh, announcement to, to sign with Bellator. And those are all guys that are more than willing to get into the shit-talking uh, with him. And I think that those fights all sell. They certainly all draw the attention that he would want. And, uh, you know, if he does want to win a title, Go to middleweight. That's where it's at. I mean, that division is, is is poor right now with talent. I would say there's certainly guys that you know. There's a lot of back. There's certainly exciting fighters in that division. There's no guys right now that are just screaming high level. I I, I wouldn't say, um, but that option definitely is there for you, Chael. Wink, wink, hint, hint. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. But before I go, I wanted to address something. Uh, you know, I wanted to address the Mickey Gall fight and the call out. Uh, first and shortly, CM Punk needs to fight somewhere else. I mean, it, it, it's uh, there's still a, a large room for improvement before he can even compete at the lower levels of the UFC talent brass. Uh, but who knows if that happens? Who's gonna? Who, who else is really going to be willing to dish out uh, a half a million bucks just right there off the fly for him? Uh, not too many spots are gonna do that. Maybe Bellator. Uh, maybe you know. I mean, uh, after watching that fight, do they really feel the need to to want to put that type of money on him? But my next point after deciding to keep it real there. But Mickey Gall, Mickey Gall. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say that he doesn't deserve to be in the UFC anymore either, that that should have been his only fight, that he should move on and, and try to earn his way back. I'm not on that boat at all. People tend to forget a handful of fighters have, you know, made their way into the UFC with just as much experience as Mickey Gall has. Guys like Cain Velasquez, Gray Maynard, both debuted with the UFC at 2-0. Look where they are now. One competed for a lightweight championship, the heavyweight championship of the world. Maybe the, uh, Cain Velasquez next, possibly. Who knows? Um, and, you know, there are guys who made their MMA debuts with the UFC. Guys like Matt Mitrione, guys like Amir Sadala, guys who went on to have prolific names uh, in the sport. Maybe not superstardom, but, you know, guys that certainly found some success. And Gall is actually showing that he's quite promotable as well, you know? He had a solid, real... You know, it, it, I mean, there was nothing about that post-fight interview that he had that that spelled fake or fixed. And he called out a legit up-and-comer. I, I mean, really think that the guy has potential, and he certainly has earned the opportunity to prove that he has what it takes to belong in the UFC long term. I think that he deserves that much. And I hope he does fight Northcutt. That fight makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, for a lot of people, I've been saying Sage is a lightweight. Think about this too. I mean, he, first of all, he's a humongous lightweight. 
very big guy. He has fought at welterweight before as well. And, I mean, he's kind of like in that Donald Cerrone territory where he's he's pretty big and can fight at both divisions competitively, I think, if given the time to really improve and, and, uh, and, and get to that level. You know what I mean? And I think for this fight, it makes sense. I'd be all for it. As I said before, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. If you're watching on YouTube, also give it a like. Uh, but if you are on YouTube, check the links in the description below. MMAoutsiders.com, your pound-for-pound -pound source for all things MMA. I'm back to writing. I took a little bit of a hiatus uh, due to all the stuff I said at the beginning of the video. Um, but uh, again, I appreciate you guys so very much. Third and lastly... Give me some comments. I want to hear some feedback from you guys. I appreciate uh, all comments, no matter how silly or weird, as long as they're not insulting to me or any other uh, members of the page. Uh, <clears throat> give me any questions that you guys like. Next week, I will certainly be looking to incorporate them onto the show, and shout-outs will be given, of course, to all the people that give me the questions. Uh, so, And don't forget, this Saturday, UFC Fight Night 94, Poirier versus Johnson. Fantastic card, fantastic main event, mainly because I'm extraordinarily excited to see Dustin Poirier get back in there. I mean, since moving to lightweight, he has looked fantastic. He is he is just right there. He beats Michael Johnson. He is right there on the cusp of a title shot. Seriously. And Johnson needs a win. It's definitely coming off that loss against Nate Diaz last December. So he's back his back's a little bit against the wall here. We'll see what happens. Great card. Bellator. Uh, 161, I want to say. 161. Check Congo versus Tony Johnson. Now, Tony Johnson has looked like um, a real dark horse in that Bellator heavyweight division. Uh, so, check that fight out. I, I think it's also going to be a stellar card, hopefully. We shall see. Um, I appreciate you guys so very much. Thank you guys for watching. This has been the second episode of Puncher's Chance, and I will see you guys next week in the next episode. Enjoy the fights this weekend. Till next week. Later!